Have you yet to feel the addicting sensation of pain? A siren call so soothing that you forget who you are for a split second? Or maybe you've come here to satisfy your weekly quota of misery and torture. Well fortunately, that is exactly what I'm going to be breastfeeding all of you this video. Put your LE hentai body pillows to the side and prepare yourselves because I have the perfect challenge that just so happens to foster this so-called pain. Can you beat Borderlands 3 with only one health and no shields? Gamers around the world that know of Borderlands should have shuddered in their undies after hearing that sentence. The enemies in this game are known to give generous prizes that consist of bullets and death. Having just one health will not be enough to stay alive during these fights, especially when just getting hit in the goddamn shoelace renders you into a paraplegic. But that is the name of the game when you have an irrational devotion to masochism. Before we dive into this run, let's talk about the rules. Rule 1. In order to get to one health and zero shields, I need the Deathless Artifact and the Rough Rider Shield. Deathless gives me one health and the Rough Rider puts my shield capacity at zero. And yes, I know that the Rough Rider Shield is basically nonsensical this run, but hey, the orange in my shield spot makes my trouser serpent happy. Rule 2. Although that should have been the end of the rules, I am adding one more. No skill points can be placed into any trees and no legendary weapons or grenades. With the rules set, I want all of you to sit your ass meat in a comfy chair, maybe with a few friends and family members, open up a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and sit back. <laughs> you know, who knows? Maybe you'll even be a sweet little thing and sensually pound that like button, cause I would love that. Will my power have enough explosive yield to take down the children of cringe and the incest empire Tyreen and Troy have made? Yeah. Will the king of Asperger's cause me to break my keyboard? Let's find out. For my vault hunter this run, I decided to elect the one person that knows not of diplomacy and only of destruction. That vault hunter is our Russian mama Mose. Making her way from the streets of Moscow, she has moved to Pandora to take up the better wages and submissiveness of its inhabitants. I will allow action skills to be used this run, with the exception of only two uses per boss fight. This is solely the reason that I chose her. Iron Bear is patented Russian military grade ass tender technology. Using that bad boy during rough parts as a means of leniency will be the difference between overwhelming insanity and cum induced victory. The illustrious and unfathomable claptrap awaited me as I got off the bang bus. Unfortunately, he reminded me that I was disgusting. Not only did I hold the intellect of a piece of paper, but I also was hideously deformed with the defect of only one health. It's disgusting. What is that? What am I looking at? After naming myself in tribute of a great leader that has taught me that it is okay to be a genetic failure, Bennett Trill, the Vladoff gunner was ready for the trials and tribulations that were before her. With Iron Papa to protect her from the perverse and erotic bandits that filled these lands, I set off with the boy Clapturd to bring our divine crusade to the heroin babies that have invaded Pandora. These man-children are members of a degenerate group that only know two things, incessant douchebaggery and incest. They congregate in large masses and are not sustainable by the Crimson Raiders. I was commissioned to depopulate these vermin and that is exactly what I was going to do. Welcome to Simple Solutions with Senza. On today's episode, we will discuss the importance of the space bar. The only solution this run is to make sweet and continuous, oily, fiery, spicy love with that space bar. Sure, hiding from a distance and using a long range weapon is an option, but Fuck that. We need to make our space bar feel special this run. If for some goddamn reason you're hurting for some challenging gameplay mm. and wish to become an autistic savant such as myself, then this is for you. To survive in the unforgiving plains of Pandora, you're going to need to be hitting that space bar so goddamn much he'll file rape charges against you. This may feel wrong at first, but it is the only way to combat the systematic torture these enemies will give you. Thank you for watching, and let's get back to the run. Shiv was not a difficult fight due to him having very few ranged attacks. His efforts to get close to my petite and precious Christian body were null. Unfortunately, this success did lead to me meeting Lilith, and doing so was the worst decision of my life. I was unionized by this tyrannical leader, and I didn't have a choice. Forced to join the Crimson Raiders to carry out God's work and destroy the children of cringe. This moment was miserable and full of sorrow, one that I will always remember. But hey, <laughs> Hey, I can't complain. At least I was able to watch a tutorial on how to make the perfect cup of coffee. Hey guys, welcome to Senza's cooking channel. Today I'll show you guys how to make a perfect cup of coffee. 
so that you can swindle any scoundrel in your journeys. And there I was, off to a dangerous territory to save my compadre that was being held hostage by these heathens. Little did I know, this was going to be the worst hour and a half of my life due to unforeseen accidents that just so happened to have been caused by guns. I was getting sent home in body bags every 20 to 30 seconds. I know many people hate certain aspects of this game. Time to talk to Lilith. That is totally understandable. But my problem is that Ellie clearly holds a voluptuous monopoly over the lands of Pandora, leaving a woman like Moe's or Brick penalized by the worst type of penalty, which is the lack of tangible full-size body pillows. <laughs> I know, it's quite unfair, but just like the infinite bounds of Ellie's voluptuousness, Moses' will is undying. And with that, the enemies that rested in her path unfortunately were subject to the laws of ass tenderizing. Holy shit, could I stop? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> With new whip in my possession, it was time to head over and spank up the little delinquent mouthpiece in the name of unionized work. Although we are tempted to head there now and finish the job, we must first devise a plan for this run. Operation My Dad Smashed My Game Boy So I Smashed His Daughter is now in full effect. This damageless run will be quite the doozy. A nice cuisine of essential nutrients and vitamins will be important to actually completing this run, as your brain power and focus need to be at an all time high. This run will turn into a psychological horror fest and you will question hey, your very existence. Michael. Remember, sticking by your iron bear from time to time and spamming that space bar will be your only salvation. <sighs> Our gorgeous hunk of a man bear will protect us in times of need, but can only be used twice per boss fight. That is why molesting that space bar will be our second line of defense. But wait a second, you don't want to hear the plan, do you, you little dog, you? You just want to see me in pain. You just want to see this super cool tattoo this Omega Chad got, huh? You make me sick. Alright, fine. G cut back to the run. Just fuck. Just fucking. It was time to rain martial law down on the Children of Cringe compound, and hopefully, we won't pop a blood vessel in the process. Things were going smoothly, and this torque shotgun was putting in actual work. Getting into the compound resulted in five deaths, but in due time, I was inside and ready to penetrate everything and anything that had an orifice. These mentally incapable gang members felt the wrath of my bullet virus, and unfortunately for them, the mortality rate is 100%. Mouthpiece will be the first, and definitely not the last, to experience the wrath of my One Health madness. My first tussle with them honestly wasn't too bad, seeing as there were literally hordes of growth stunted humans that were around me for cannon fodder. After getting thrown into the gutter once, I did the doing of killing mouthpiece and got the vault map. This was expected, and peace was now not an option. The children of Bodom knew of my assault against their empire. They were now going to be expecting the clappage of their mud flaps. After grabbing the map and forcing Tannis to decipher it with my superior negotiation skills, I was forced into a dark practice that I had long forgotten. We needed few for our getaway ship, and the only method available was to give the poor creatures around me the active equivalent of a Thanos snap. I am ashamed of what I have done, but we all must remember that in the eyes of the Crimson Raiders, these were just peasants. Getting to Lilith was as most would say, completely doo doo kaka, but after just brute forcing the mobs in my way, I revived the pinnacle of uselessness. The fuck you say? and into the dark unknown I went to continue on with this crusade. Things were dark here on Promethea, where Ellie held a monopoly over thickness, Malawan held a monopoly over just being straight up dingleberries. They had Promethea's delicate little bum spread open, and they were going to town like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Porn stash man needed our help, and unfortunately, I was forced to oblige. The amount of times I went down during this part was ridiculous. Literally them just shooting at me in the flack of my parachute pants would instantly down me, and there was nothing that I could do about it. This all made me also realize that my girlfriend was into reverse cuckolding because she enjoyed watching me get f***ed. She absolutely adored it. Big dumb idiot was saved again, and it was time to get our hands on a piece of Malawan intel that would bring heaps of help to this crusade. But first, I had to meet with one of Reese's connections. These Malawan soldiers had broken a rule in the legislation of Promethean Stop. law, and that rule was taking my zero away from me. And it was up to me to punish them by death for breaking such a thing. Though the bounds of my power are that of a porn star with erectile dysfunction, things were going to be ameliorated. With zero by my side, his presence gave me a form of therapy. He gave me 
temporary relief from the pain and sodomy that I had been suffering. No waifu, project melody, or any amount of toilet paper could ever compare to the gloriousness that is Zero. Hell, even after we went to town on the Malawan soldiers, he held my hand through the Giga Chad fight. I entered that arena to face Big Brain, and even though I pumped him full of as much damage as I possibly could, he bested my one health, and I thought this was all over. But obviously, there he was. My hulking Chad in shining armor, here to rescue and revive me. God bless this man. Katagawa had threatened us for even attempting to get close to his Giga Chad, but I had no patience for pandering to a Make-A-Wish recipient, so Giga Chad was now Giga Dead. Athenus was next, and here's where I insert some typical Senza joke on Ava and her writing. But nope, not today. It is in my duty to not speak of that deplorable and disgusting evil. But I will speak of the fact that Gerald here still didn't die when entering the level. They really need to fix that, because I enjoy him dead. Athenus is a boner realistic paradise that is idyllic for anyone that enjoys masochism. I don't think I've ever raged so hard at a video game in a while. The enemies here were vicious and unrelenting. Literally just a scent of my vault hunter and the pussy vultures came to devour my ass. Iron Bear did its work here and there, but the amount of times I died was still migraine inducing. Before hitting Athenus, I was actually at 180 deaths, just 20 minutes into this place, and I shot up a whopping 63. This cock and ball torture was a major yikes, and you want to know what made it worse? The fact that Maya, that no good for nothing vile being, watched me as my soul was incessantly defiled and pillaged. Fortunately, if you have an IQ over 250 and made it past the beginning part of this level, then you should have contracted ADHD and a severe case of rock brain. Hopefully, all of your troubles have brought you to Tron, and you are ready for this parade. The problem with Trant was his thick and girthy shield. That shit is so goddamn fat, it puts the Doom Slayer's ass to shame. If you pair that fatty shield with the fact that you probably have an arsenal fit for taking on a legion of red bars, then you are going to have a bad time. Death after death, I was being oppressed. But if Trant wanted to bed me, he was going to have to make my nipples lactate just a little harder. Another couple of tries in the Vault Hunter Russian death camp, and I was able to topple the giant that was Trant. As a reward for such a feat, I watched these dudes revive me, and God bless Gearbox for not patching this out. It's beautiful. It's so damn beautiful. It was time for the Skywell, arguably the best place in the entirety of the Borderlands games. The Skywell was typical business. I went there amped up, enough energy to rival that of a 90s Capri Sun commercial, and still that wasn't enough. The entire area led to me actually dying 108 times. There was no point in praying, because words will not dare adhere to any deity. The only way to get through this torture was to be a machine. A greasy, oily machine hitting this bad boy again and again. Katagawa's Adam and Eve signature sex toy, The Complete Collection, was here to attempt to ruin our day. But fret not, because I am here to be your guide. My tips for getting past him? <laughs> I don't can have any. I honestly have no tips for getting past any of this, but what I will tell you now is that he f***ed my shit up. Ow, you're hurting me. Katagawa Ball demolished me, but after licking my fingers, puffing out my chest, and clenching my butt cheeks, I charged at him with lethal force and actually survived the encounter. A dash of luck was thrown into there, but god damn, the outcome came as a surprise. The only way to make it out is to run around and cross your fingies in hope that when you get down, there is a trash mob nearby that will give his life for the crusade. The toy was dead, and I was relieved. I was happy. I was contempt. Everything was fine until Lilith informed me that the Crimson Raiders had no patience for Katagawa's ideologies. And since his cheeks were in spanking distance, I had to go take them out. It was time to raid Atlas HQ and stop this Malawan threat once and for all. These Malawan soldiers were nothing but fanboys for Katagawa. They'd suck that teat even if it was covered in cow feces. So this was going to be an easy assault. They were going to be easy targets. This was where the difficulty decided to ramp up tremendously. With my one health, there was nothing I could do in the defense of Katagawa's limitless power. This boss fight is normally easy every run, but the fact that I am constantly getting gangbanged by him and his 3D printed clones made this all the harder. This man and his erotic fantasy went to town on my very livelihood. But after 22 tries, a bit of testosterone, and my iron bear, I had finally done it. Holy shit, I'm gonna come. Katagawa 
met his inevitable death. And then I made sure to read my comments and not call Reese by Katagawa again, because I'd really like to keep my YouTube channel and not get cancelled. Assaulting the Incest Empire outposts and hitting the first Vault Beast was next on the list. There really wasn't much to say about this area, except that it gave me another round of nice poo poo pee pee gameplay. But the good news is, Maya's senses finally came back to her, and she was actually reviving me for once. <laughs> I went into the Rampager fight worried. I was positive that I was going to get completely destroyed, but surprisingly, it actually wasn't that bad. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? That's 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 I can feel my leg, and my arm, even my fingers. Even with the leniency of the spirits, I did die a few times, but hey, I came here for that vault beast ass and stayed for the pain. After a few attempts, I killed him and then f***ed off off to a place that would bring me my divine intervention. A place where the waifus congregate and you lose all sense of time. A place that can seize any and all violence. That place is Eden 6, baby. Let's f go! Woo! The run was wrapping up, and as my morale continued to grow, so did my heart on for justice. The Wainwrights and the Children of Cringe hostility had to be stopped, and I was here with my one health and my arsenal of toilet roll weapons to stop it. I'll give you guys a quick rundown on Eden 6, to save you all from the aesthetically unpleasing color palette and gameplay. Hammer Me Daddy needed saving, and guess what? That was all up to us. The tussle with the Prison Warden was a pain also. Literally just dropping into this arena would result in an instant death. I was lucky enough to have a corrosive weapon to eat through his armor, but god damn, that's a thick ass boy. This was miserable, and my patience was dwindling by the minute. My only option was to deal as much damage as possible at first, and then after reviving off of a poor soul nearby, pumping as much of my iron bare ass as possible into this boss. With the warden dead and Wainwright's lover saved, I was hyped, and one of the hardest bosses of this run had now been taken care of. After hitting the Wainwright Playboy Mansion for an old record, I was given orders to rescue a teddy bear and bring him back to safety. My worries were abundant for this part, because at this point anything used against me would straight up me. My will and determination were the only two things lavishly funding this crusade at this point. By the grace of God's beautiful little asshole, I was blessed. Blessed with a break from all this pain. This area was relatively easy, and when Genevieve was confronted, just hitting her with a couple of my corrosive shots brought her a generous healthy portion of death. With Genevieve dead and her breach into my anime and pornography hard drives dealt with, it was time to die some more, getting all of the homies key cards, and then take on Frosty the Snow Bitch. Many deaths were had leading up to this point, even so that I was seeing the game in a permanent black and white from all the time that was spent in Fight for Your Life. Along in my travels though, I found a pistol. This bad boy literally assisted me in doing God's work. This thing straight up slapped and turned me into even more of a monster than I was before. After the hordes were all done and dealt with, it was time to bust it down. Bust it down for Jesus, for the boys for this W. Just on my second try, I was able to topple the intimidating and daunting Aurelia. This weapon had straight up dissected her butt cheeks, and it was actually disgusting. She was forced to subsist on a diet of straight up pain and agony, and with her dead, it was time to take out our next apparent threat, the Grave Ward. This boss, on the other hand, wasn't as much of an ease as Aurelia was. Sure, this weapon that held the power of the small sun was in my possession, but that didn't matter. Grave Ward wasn't the problem. It was actually the enemies that spawned during the fight. They were disgusting and relentless, all of them being badass variants of certain mobs and I just couldn't take it. Just like peeing in the wind, it was all coming back to me now. All the enemies that I have demolished in my path of carnage, this was now my time to pay for what I had done. The only way to actually make it through this torture was to set things up properly. Focusing them as they spawned in and lowering their health was a trick. Doing so would allow me to get a quick and easy revive whenever I would go down to some random bullshit. 45 minutes later, I killed the grave ward and was ready to find finally end this torture, to finish this crusade. Tannis was captured by a surprise phase lock RKO out of nowhere, and me being the manly, testosterone-fueled, virile male that I was, I needed to save her. I arrived at the Carnivora Festival, lost and looking for purpose. I was on the hunt, and I needed to be. These bandits were susceptible to my fiery weapon of mass destruction. They were dropping like flies, and not a single thing could be done about it. Of course, I was too, but we won't talk about that. I died my way to the actual Carnivora.
Devora, and after disabling it and taking that sucker down, I went aboard for yet some more enjoyable dying. I'll be honest, I was just trying to run to the Agonizer's boss arena, but I was constantly getting stopped in my tracks. It was like having blue balls, but inside of a video game. The Agonizer 9000 fight was actually a breeze. My purple corrosion torque shotgun was dropping some mad deeps, and that paired alongside the best weapon in the entire game, I was able to take him out on my second try. Things were going great, and I was a happy man. Until the Crimson Raiders decided to take down the Incest Empire. I was overloaded with death every time I showed my face, and the delinquent bandits were enjoying the field day they were having all over my body. I was hoping all of this pain would reinstate my power, and I would come back stronger than I ever was. But death and I, we go together like ass cheeks on a hot summer day. This next part will prove that statement even further. The man that I assumed to be nothing but a dumpster baby, the genetic dead end that finally matched my masculinity. This fight has phases. Getting him to a certain health will postpone me from being able to damage him. So one iron bear summoning just wasn't enough, and I would die before the second one could even make it halfway. I went from 717 deaths during this part to 809, and I actually did something for the first time in Senza history. I feel disgusted to be showing you this. I broke a portion of my keyboard in result of a depressive baby rage spout. What makes it all the better is all I had to do was take a break for a couple of hours and come back to beat him in my second try. Let this serve as a reminder that we shouldn't let a game overcome us, gentlemen. Even if the strap-on is fully fastened and they are pounding away at your very manlyhood, stand strong and do not falter, for soon you will prevail. The Smegma Leviathan was taken down by my very hand, and my trousers weren't even off yet. It was time for Necro to fail. Having this place in my planetary locator was special. You see, here on this wonderful, tame and vibrant planet, ideologies don't matter, and opportunities such as dying are massive. With Tront being defeated in merely just two tries, this run was starting to wrap up, and it felt great. I wanted out of this as soon as I possibly could, and with the finish line in sight, I had a smile on my face all the way to Tyrene. My sheen from Jimmy Neutron brain actually thought that this was almost over. I actually thought that I was nearly done. It turns out Tyrene wasn't the tentacle waifu and fetish queen we sought her out to be. Tyrene destroyed me every attempt. Even with having a longer fight for your life duration, dying in her arena was inevitable with only one health. Her cuisine consisted of my tears and that is exactly what she got. Every attempt ended up one of two ways. Either I, with the intellect of a f***ing apple, would get devoured by some sort of bullshit attack or mob, or I would get her health bar low, but because I was downed more than three times, I would instantly die and fight for your life. No amount of prayers or sacrificial babies could save me from this one, boys. I went into this boss fight with 863 deaths and finally broke after 978. I caved in and broke one of my rules. I know that this is sacrilege in the testament of the diaper booty chairman, but I had to. Although this was a rule I made, I still felt disgusted. I injected the skill points into my tree and it was stupefying. I never had a hit feel so goddamn good. It took me another 13 tries, but I finally did it. Proving skill points really do make a difference and digging me deeper into my pit of guilt. It possibly could have been easier if I used another Vault Hunter. Maybe if I used better weapons, maybe if I was a better player, but I failed. Even though I technically beat the game with only one health and no shields, I'm going to have to say that I didn't. This is the third L in the history of Senza Answers Bizarre Questions, and I am going to have to say I am disappointed in myself. And my keyboard actually lost its life for this L. I wouldn't wish this challenge onto anyone, not even my worst enemies. I will say, this has been the most annoying challenge on this channel and I swear after editing this, I will never watch it again. Thank you for those that made it to the end, and if you did, please comment hashtag trouser serpent because penis jokes are cool and funny, and I'll heart your comment. If you enjoy what I do here, go ahead and give that like button a soothing shot of heroin. And if you like these crusades, maybe you will kindly hit that bell notification for a kiss from yours truly. The next video will be a Doom Eternal video, so prepare your panties for that one. See you cuties next week.